There you are again. Okay. Now I told you last time I was going to cut some of this little blue foam. They're kind of a, a soft little foam. I'm just going to cut some chunks. I have a little square. That would maybe be better. Kind of hold it down while I cut. A little square I picked up from Enco. I think it was. A little set that I got. Make it a nice straight cut. Get a better get a better gauge on the width of that. And I got my hot glue gun heating up over there. So we can stick them on. I think for end scale they need to be particularly deep. I'm just going to make little pads about yay long. Is that a, is that a customary measurement? Yay? Yay long? Just to give it a little bit of grip so that if you're fumbly fingers like me you know, knock your freshly painted little loco shell to the ground. Just gonna put a glue dot. And we'll get a bigger one. Stick that on there. It shouldn't take very much. Oh, they're a little, little staticky, or else I got a string stuck to them. Probably a string stuck to them. Ooh, yep. Ow. That's good. So I've got my um, Irwin bit set, and I'm going to pick a size. I think three eighths or three quarters. Three quarters should do it. I'll go get me a hunk of. Uh, 2x4 or 1x4 or something like that but you see that's that's on there it's not slipping around that's nice yeah it's a little cramped in the old workshop slash garage right now but I see I could still get to most stuff maybe not this metal cutting bandsaw I drilled a three quarter inch hole and put a regular paper uh, clothespin in there with nothing clamping clamped to it because when you put this inside the body it exerts a little spring pressure and it kind of, it's kind of sloppy fits real nice in the uh, 5 8 hole but if I have any pressure at all it's not going to fit so my little body makes it too big but that'll hold and it'll keep it till it dries. And what I so I'll, I'll make a couple of these just in case there's something that I'm holding on there. And I also thought of making a couple, and, and they may, you know, let's say you're holding on to something this way, you can stick it in there if it'll if it'll fit. But or you can put it in this hole. That's a, a little smaller size. And I may drill a couple bigger holes. So that if you've got it all the way down, probably a seven eighths hole, maybe one in the middle or something. So I'm and I'm just kind of eyeballing them. It's at a stop on my depth.
try to get them across from each other just in case like you're doing a passenger car and you want to hold you want two of them because it's kind of longish or maybe a bridge a building a wall section something like that not pretty. It's an old piece of split wood that was out on the fire firewood pile. Let me go get the 7 8. If you're wondering how this is held in place, there's one bolt over here in the corner, right over here. And so it lets you it's firm enough that it's not going to spin the the part out of your hands if you're working, but I can still move it back and forth to line it up for soldering. And I can hang on to the handle here just so it doesn't get away. A little further away. Okay. And so now if I wanted to hold something in there with another closed pin, I could. It'd be really close. If I didn't have foam on that, that would work. Alrighty. Meet you back inside. And there she blows. That's the way it goes together. I'm going to go uh, grab some more clothespins. And since I've got the little uh, foam pads, I'm going to put some on the inside jaws. A couple more on the outside jaws. And make up a bunch just in case I get the urge to do some more projects. Speaking of projects... We have one I'm working on that's a car that we were using on the Ingle Nook. Um, this had a really pronounced mold injection point on there. And I uh, sanded that all down and got it pretty smooth. I'm going to cut a, a little mask to go out over this area and spray down, sp spray gray through the mask and it'll bleed under the mask a little bit so it'll look like it's overspray from the body and I'll mask off the body so I don't get any overspray on the the body itself and that way it'll look like it's bleeding into the the roof it's a commemorative car it's an n track uh, Reno convention of what is that West Nevada 90 but you know what it was two dollars. It was a little kit. I painted the uh, underframe. I gave it a set of uh, Fox Valley wheels, and uh, I think it's a neat little box car. But it, I was not at the convention, so I'm going to go ahead and weather it up, and it'll just become a background piece, and somebody may notice it when it comes rolling past. That, that'd be kind of cool. My other little project is this little guy. Now. This car has been around for a while. This is one of my wife's brother's cars. And you can see there's a whole section of side frame and cross member missing, plus the ladder. This is what it's supposed to look like at this end. So that I need to duplicate this. Now, because I have this corner, I can go a couple of ways. I can cast that with resin, you know, make a mold of this and cast another piece and cut it to fit and glue it in there or I could scratch build it but I think that would look kind of odd right now I'm going to pull out the uh, tape that I got and uh, go print me a picture of the paint scheme for this locomotive and just kind of get an idea of how well that's going to work so I've been looking at the photograph eyeballing what we have and this is a this is a pretty good little model even though the pilot's notched so you can slide it over the coupler which I may be able to make a little filler plate or something like that to go on it after looking at my photo and comparing it to model I believe the upper bounds of the stripe are right here at that rib in the grill so that looks like it cuts across the windows at about the right spot 
and the bottom of it should be right here just clipping the top of the door you can see it in the picture and extending down onto that panel just a bit and then just over the number board the tapes about the right width for that back here the tapes not quite wide enough it comes down from the rib and if I mask the rib off so that the rib is white that's about perfect and then I have to go down to about right there above the door right right there just catching that edge of the door so just a little skinny on the tape but I think I want to spread shoot one more um, coat of the white through that little section and I may mask it off not using this but something else may try the masking tape trick or the uh, scotch tape suggestion and shoot just the stripe and that'll give me a, a little bit of experience trying to put in that that radius we'll see how that works um, if you guys have a tip on how to do that uh, email me shoot me a shoot me a message all right so that's where we're at We'll talk at you later.